You were a beautiful child, with troubled face, green eyelids, and black lace stockings. We met in a filthy bar. You said, My name is Nada. I don't want anything from you. I will not take from you. I will give you nothing. I took you home down alleys, splattered with moonlight and garbage and cats, to your desolate, disheveled room. Your feet were dirty. The lacquer was chipped on your fingernails. We spent a week, hand in hand, wandering entranced together through a sweltering summer of guitars and gunfire and tropical leaves and black shadows in the moonlight a lifetime ago. It is late at night, cold and damp. The air is filled with tobacco smoke. My brain is worried and tired. I pick up the encyclopedia, the volume G.I.C. to H.A.R. It seems I have read everything in it so many other nights like this. I sit staring empty-headed at the article Grosbeak, listening to the long rattle and pound of freight cars and switch engines in the distance. Suddenly, I remember coming home from swimming in Ten Mile Creek over the long moraine in the early summer evening, my hair wet, smelling of water weeds and mud. I remember a sycamore in front of a ruined farmhouse, and instantly and clearly the revelation of a song of incredible purity and joy, my first rose-breasted gross peak, facing the low sun, his body suffused with light. I was motionless and cold in the hot evening, until he flew away, and I went on knowing in my twelfth year one of the great things of my life had happened. Thirty factories empty their refuse in the creek. The farm has given way to an impoverished suburb. On the parched lawns are starlings, alien and aggressive. And I am on the other side of the continent, ten years in an unfriendly city. I am a man with no ambitions and few friends, wholly incapable of making a living, growing no younger, fugitive from some just doom, lonely, ill-clothed, what does it matter? At midnight I make myself a jug of hot white wine and cardamom seeds. In a torn gray robe and old beret I sit in the cold, writing poems, drawing nudes on the crooked margins, copulating with sixteen-year-old nymphomaniacs of my imagination. For a month now, wandering over the Sierras, a poem had been gathering in my mind, details of significance and rhythm, the way poems do, but still lacking a focus. Last night I remembered the date, and it all began to grow together and take on purpose. We sat up late while Deneb moved over the zenith, and I told Marie all about Boston, how it looked that last terrible week, how hundreds stood weeping, impotent in the streets that last midnight. I told her how those hours changed the lives of thousands, how America was forever a different place afterwards for many. In the morning we swam in the cold, transparent lake, the blue damsel flies on all the reeds like millions of narrow metallic flowers. And I thought of you behind the grill in Dedham, Vansetti, saying, Who would ever have thought we would make this history? Crossing the brilliant mile square meadow, illuminated with asters and cyclamen, the pollen of the lodgepole pines drifting with the shifting wind over it, and the blue and sulphur butterflies drifting with the wind, I saw you in the sour prison light, saying, Goodbye, comrade. In the basin, under the crest, where the pines end and the Sierra Primrose begins, a party of lawyers was shooting at a whiskey bottle. The bottle stayed on its rock. Nobody could hit it. Looking back over the peaks and canyons from the last lake, the pattern of human beings seemed simpler than the diagonals of water and stone. Climbing the chute, up the melting snow and broken rock, 
I remembered what you said about Sacco, how it slipped your mind, and you demanded it be read into the record. Traversing below the ragged arate, one cheek pressed against the rock, the wind slapping the other, I saw you both marching in an army, you with the red and black flag, Sacco with the rattlesnake banner. I kicked steps up the last snow bank and came to the indescribably blue and fragrant pulmonium and the dead sky and the sterile crystalline granite and final monolith of the summit. These are the things that will last a long time, Vansetti. I am glad that once on your day I have stood among them. Some day mountains will be named after you and Sacco. They will be here and your name with them. When these days are but a dim remembering of the time when man was wolf to man, I think men will be remembering you for a long time, standing on mountains, many men, a long time, comrade. I have closed my ears. I refuse to listen to my mouth weeping. I have closed my mouth. I refuse the taste of my weeping eyes. I have closed my eyes on the past as you want it remembered for the rest of life, called forever. I was not there. I was away, at the poles, in the Amazon. I am not going to have been where you say I was. You fancy you can force me to have lived the past you want. You are wrong.